Shoot, we could just come in talking, I guess, man, because people love to just send in all types of comments and things of that nature about where is this player, where is that player, where we're going to find out and let them know when we want to let them know. Yeah, yeah, that's right. If, if y'all are just waiting, y'all just waiting for bad news, you're not going to get it today. You're not going to get it today. This is going to be a fun stream, so y'all smash that like for some good vibes. Uh, you feel me? You're not going to get it from here. You're going to get the good news, the good vibes. Not much candy, but you will get some vegetables. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Hey, big Dog Chico, I got a question for you. Where, Where's Cormani? Where's Jordan Seaton? Where's uh, Carter Stoutmeyer? Like, good Lord, man. I love the well-off stuff, man. But but some <laughs> people, man, y'all can shove that up your butt, dude. Just always asking about where's this guy, where's that guy. Y'all just enjoy the people you got on the camera for that day. Can can we just be happy with what we get? Good Lord. <laughs> yes, Run them lights up. Hey. <laughs> hey. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> if you don't know, now you know you're tuned into the one and only. This is the dog and Dave. David Talks Buffs, Big Dog Chico, we up in this thing, man, live and direct, back like vertebrae. What's happening, my dog? Man, just enjoying a beautiful day out here in Colorado. It's yeah. uh, it's wonderful, man. We got a little bit of, like, I don't know if you saw those big snowflakes that we got. It was, like, raining, and then it turned to snow. They were, like, this big, man. They are like, this big. On Monday. Okay. Yeah. It's Damn. all gone, though. Coach Riz posted today and showing how beautiful it was outside. And he was like, this is what the recruits need to see. That is not all snow. You know, it can get nice and, and, and pretty and, and 70 plus degrees out here and look very nice in Boulder. He was down there on Pearl Street. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But hopefully we got the snow out of the way. Um, you know, it, it would it would make sense for us to, of course, you know, we get a blizzard on the spring game last year broadcast ESPN, but Watch, watch this year. It's going to be 70, sunny, perfect weather for the, you know, 15 people that got Pac-12 Network to check this thing out. Y'all be sure to sign up for your Fubo free trial. Get ready. Get ready for that spring game broadcast. <laughs> so how many people got? Man, got like 15, man. I, I, I'm surprised that they're still operating, if I'm, if I'm being totally honest. But I saw that they, you know, they had the option to broadcast it. They wanted to take that. Good for them. Maybe they can make a little bit of money uh, as – I mean, I don't even know what's going to happen to that network now that the conference is kind of falling apart. But uh, hopefully it can go out with a bang. Should be a show in Boulder, that's for sure. Yeah, I think they just, you know, getting that last money grab that they can get uh, out of Colorado and the Pac-12 or wherever else, and um, and then they're going to be just, just disappearing to the night like anybody else, I think. So – yeah, I think it's a money grab at the end of the day, man. Because anybody could have could have been showcasing this, um, and could have taken the opportunity. But I think they might have had first dibs on it. And of course, if they're smart with any type of sense, they're going to take that each and every time. So uh, everybody, get ready to tune in and watch the game on the Pac-12 Network for the last time. You know, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, you know, because everybody. It was hard to get it on last year, man, in some some cases. You know, for me at least it was. Ugh. It was so cold, man. It was so miserable. But <laughs> you know, we we tried to have the best attitudes we could. You know, it was still fun and and all that. But man, I thought it was April Fools, Chico. I thought it was April Fools. I was like, there's no way this thing is true, man. This network will not die. I said <laughs> I'd rather see us on uh freaking Tubi. But it is what it is. <laughs> That would be an option. Get 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 us on Tubi, dog. Get us on Tubi, you know. So uh, we go. We got some topics that we're going to talk about today. Um, in light of some of these comments going on, we're going to see. Shout out to Eric Moore saying the Pac-12 is an embarrassment. <laughs> Komarni is minding his business. This narrative is annoying. Thank you, Fort Worth, Texas, in the house. Let's go. Shout out to the DF Dub. Uh, let's get it popping. Eric Moore said, "Dude, Komarni, maybe going through an injury." Exactly. As they're saying, haven't seen Kamani, haven't seen Bo Money. But hey, let us know how you're checking in, where you're checking in from. Get in the comment section to join this. Uh, get the engagements up. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Whether you're on David Talks Bus page or the Big Dog Chico page, it don't matter. Y'all can come together and share this thing. We're on Twitter, YouTube, 
uh, Facebook, Instagram, and so on. And uh, just follow us, like, and subscribe, and make sure you run them likes all the way up. As um, if you were just tuned in, you saw me. I just had the buff them updates with my guy Adam, and we were talking about cert- several different things. One of them was the big fella yeah. is now in house for sure. Big George Hagerman addresses the media. He talked about his relationship with Coach Prime dating back to 1995, before or after he signed the dotted line. But we went over to the Cowboys, and George Hagerman was already there. They formed a relationship then, hit it off then. Hagerman's been at IMG Academy. Um, he's now brought on as the director of – I don't have it in front of me. Why don't I have that? Director of Leadership and Engagement. Director of it. Leadership <laughs> and Engagement. You got it right off the top of your head. So – Shout us out to uh, George Hagerman. Let me know, Dave, though, what you think, Big George, the former All-Pro, uh, the former uh, top pick also, IMG Academy coach. What do you think he can bring to the Buffs uh, when he comes on? Man, I feel like he's a culture setter. I, I think a lot of people are overlooking this type of move, and especially to my knowledge, this was a role and position that was created for him. Uh, I don't think that this position existed beforehand. And the fact that, I mean, this is another larger topic, but the fact that you see CU spending, not only bringing in coordinators, all of that, hiring more position coaches, paying them more than we pay last year. You're also making room for Warren Sapp, technically a GA or whatever, but you're paying him like a position coach, uh, essentially or some sort of assistant, the fact that the university is spending because they want to bring more of these culture setters in here, I think is really huge. And George Hegman, I mean, listen, listening to what he had to say today, uh, you can, you can just tell man how this is going to be so important and just ironing, ironing out a lot of the, uh, the, the kinks or wrinkles that we had and that, that we witnessed during the program uh, last year. I think that you're going to see this team, uh, more unified, more disciplined on the same page. And I would imagine, uh, Big Dog, like, I want to hear your thoughts on this too, but I imagine he's kind of doing similar stuff to what he was doing as director of football at IMG Academy. But now it's just kind of overseeing the the day-to-day types of things, the culture, the communication, how all of this is going to be established, uh, just now overseeing uh, CU a bit. So, I, I think that this is another guy that um, I think I think that there's this false narrative around Coach Prime that he just only brings in his buddies that are going to do like what he wants. But I just don't see those like George Hegman or even Warren Sapp. And, you know, as, as much as my ups and downs have been, I don't think Pat Shermer is just one of those yes men type of guys uh, along with Jason Phillips. So I think that uh, Hegeman's a guy that can really help round out this program from a culture perspective. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him have a big hand in recruiting as well. So what are your yeah. thoughts on all that? Yeah, definitely a uh, big hand in recruiting, but I think it's going to be really focused on, of course, he'll have, you know, he's oozing with knowledge from the offensive line, you know, with his experience. But I think he, with the position that he's in, I think he's going to be, uh, working with the players that are there currently as mm-hmm. the director of leadership and engagement, um, let them because college football players have problems here and there. You know what? what no matter what it, what it is, it could be uh, being away from home, being away from family, uh, schoolwork, uh, money issues, whatever. It might be a little different nowadays, but he's there. He's that guy that you can go to off the field that can help you handle these day to day situations that will come up as a college football player, something that you might not be able to get to your position coach and talk to him about, boom, go to Coach Hageman up there on the fourth floor. He can help you out with this. Tons of experience um, and and very engaging type person. And I think that is going to help out each and every player. Uh, From experience myself, going through some things in college and then having to speak with a – they brought in a, a, a former head coach who was older and retired. But he came back and kind of mentored myself and a few other guys around the team. That right there helped me out alone uh, tremendously, just being able to go into a back room, talk to this coach who I know had experience, who I know is a a football mind, 
who can really help me navigate through the things that I'm going through. So that's what Coach Hageman is. They, it's an official position now. It's not just an old coach coming back like I had to deal with. Not deal with, but I was blessed with. But he's <laughs> there in that capacity to do exactly that. Players might have yeah. issues, like I said, parents, home, drugs, uh, addictions, girls, whatever. Boom. Go to Coach Hageman and speak to him. And that, he's going to be a big, safe space for those players. I love it a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, that's Coach Hageman. Uh, like I said, he will help out with the offensive line some. And we've been looking at the the well-off media videos, the pregame show videos, and reach the people media uh, videos. And you've noticed that the offensive line has been shifting around a lot. And there's a big, huge offensive line battle that's going on. You've noticed uh, Khalil Benson at right tackle a couple of days ago. Now he moved to left tackle, and you saw him even at guard line up a few times. I think that's showing the versatility of him, and they're also showing the versatility and the depth of that, off- of that offensive line. What do you feel about this offensive line battle right now? How is it looking in your eyes? Yeah, I love how – Right now, it's kind of a toss up for a handful of these positions on who's going to win it out. You know, I don't think, I don't think center has been decided. And right now, it looks like the guard might just be as undecided as as right tackle is right now. And so, right. I, I thought that that was pretty interesting to see not only uh, Khalil Benson and Savion Washington playing next to each other for a little bit, but also seeing uh, Benson play a little bit of left tackle. I, I didn't see Seaton in the videos. Maybe I was missing some of that, but may, maybe he was out with a little bit of an injury. But I do think – I have wondered if Khalil is better set to play guard than he is tackle. But uh, nonetheless, I feel like he's in the thick of it when it comes to in, – and in all of these position battles, whether that's right tackle or guard. And then on the same front, uh, we've seen a little bit, I, I think – well, no, I, I think it's just been from one – what I remember seeing is Yukiri Walker and Hank Solinskis taking those snaps at center. I might have seen Tyler Brown. I can't remember if it was 55 or 56 taking that snap, but I think that Hank Solinskis, a guy that Adam Munster Tigers told us to just keep an eye on over the last few months, uh, seems to be uh, in it as well. Of course, it's kind of hard for me to determine you know, who the first team and the second team line combinations are right now, just because it seems like they're moving a handful of guys around right now. But I, I, that's something that I'm like probably the most interested in right now is what types of combinations we end up with on the offensive line and who's going to be starting come that spring game. What are your thoughts on that big dog? A big time battle I see going on, but, um, I like to say this, and I did see someone, maybe it was Neely, that said, um, you know, we don't want those guys to get complacent thinking that, okay, we're better than last year and that's good enough. No, we want you, we want them to be the best that they can be. And we know that the coaching staffs are not just sitting back and saying, okay, we're better than last year. That's good enough. They're always looking to improve. They're always looking to make those guys better and always looking to bring in more competition to compete. Because that's what you see at the other schools who are, perennial playoff schools they have guys on that offensive and defensive line who can easily be rotated in shifted in uh uh you know rotated out in or out whatever that line can be moved in so many different ways to where they know that if somebody goes down this guy can come in plug and play Mm -hmm. one thing that's one thing i think uh showing the value of a guy like khalil benson who can play all of these different positions on the offensive line and be comfortable there. A lot of guys can't do that. A lot of guys aren't, aren't even willing to do that. So with him being that swing man and being able to go to different positions, I do think the coaching staff is trying to find the best spot for him yeah. and the best combination in, on that offensive line that will work together. Uh, mm-hmm. It's about that chemistry and uh, it's about them guys uh, just building that bond with each other. The, the, uh, the line that we saw first, Jordan Seaton, J- uh, Justin Mayers, mm-hmm. Kerry Walker, Tyler Brown, and Khalil Benson. That was just the first line that we saw uh, first day of passing uh, in spring, right? Uh, you know, this spring. But I don't know if that's going to be the starting line. That's why we see so many shift up and uh, uh, mixing up on that line. Shouts out to big Hank Zelenskis. Came in as a super strong freshman last year. It, he's still in that mix. 
at the center position with Yakiri Walker and Tyler Brown. The guard position, we haven't seen Tyler Johnson yet. I think he's nursing an injury. Gotcha. So the line is still not fully formed yet, and they're still working to uh, to to find that mix and match combination. And I just want to say I'm I'm very excited to see, hopefully, Coach Wold Holt develop some of these guys, to see them shore up maybe some of the areas of growth that they have in their game, see them improve with their hands, with their footwork, communication. That's one of the things that he talked about. So we're going to be great communication, uh, or we're going to be a line filled with great communication. So uh, I'm sticking to it. I'm sticking to it, Ch- Chico. Phil, all my guys know my assignments. Load hole, that's his name. And I, I'm hoping that we see we, – we don't have to have the most elite town on the offensive line or anything like that, but if we can just communicate, if we can just know our assignments, That's uh, it's going to look so much better. It's going to look so much better. Like you said, we can't get complacent that we can just say we got a better line than last year. <clears throat> that baseline is like literally the worst in college football. we got to be better than that hopefully by a sizable margin right so uh real quick though without adding anyone else and before i forget before we move on would you stay with that starting unit would you have jordan seaton in that starting unit or would you rather go with two veterans on that on the bookends with khalil benson and Xavier washington there uh on the at, at tackle spots Right now, I know that this is a little bit conservative of an approach. I do think Jordan Seaton's going to be the starting left tackle, but I would be interested, and I think I'm more keen to just start veterans first and okay. see how that whole thing plans out. So yeah. I I do have a little bit of concern of, like, can either Savion or Khalil play that left tackle position when it comes to the, the pass protection especially, but – I would rather try it first and then move on. I just don't – I I know Jordan's like a generational type offensive tackle talent, right? But yeah. I'm always a little concerned about putting too much pressure on true freshmen coming in, uh, allow them to, to ease themselves in just a little bit. Uh, yeah. But I know that, I mean, uh, Jordan already walks around looking like a grown-ass man, and it's <laughs> helpful that he's already here for, for spring practice in terms of getting ready for – for uh, August, but that's, I feel like going with veterans is always usually what I would prefer before diverting to, to young talent. I agree. I agree. I like that uh, move right there, that call, go with the veterans. And then if they don't pan out, you come in with the freshman who now has a little bit of a perspective of watching what the veterans have done. Maybe that first game, first series, whatever, how long it takes, let them watch get a little understanding of it and say, okay, I, I can play this college football for real. Even though I've been through practices and stuff, the game is a little bit different. Yeah. So uh, if we can bring in another guy, veteran, or we can see one of those two guys get comfortable at that left tackle spot because that is the one of the most important positions mm-hmm. in football, and it might be the most posi- important position on the Colorado Buffs team with our high-profile quarterback in Shador Sanders as the uh, quarterback that you're protecting on that backside. So uh, we shall see. I do think that it will be another addition. My guy, David Conner, hasn't been in the spring. Looks like he'll have a chance to come back in the summer. Uh, I'll have more information on that soon. We'll see. But uh, I think that's what it is right now. He's out for the spring as of now and should be coming back uh, for the summer. So a little bit of a setback for him, unfortunately. But um, still. You know, that offensive line will have to be, you know, made out by this summer and get that camaraderie uh, totally. together with uh, Coach Lodeho. Like you said, that co- that communication is key, and uh, hopefully they can bring that and have that throughout the season in the summer, uh, or should I, should I say the spring and the summer into the season. Yeah. So Yeah. Yeah, David Connor, man, I it it's a bummer that we don't get to see him this spring because – uh, he's been one of those guys that I've just been so anxious to see yeah. play. Uh, we've gotten like a little bit of practice clips, I guess. But, uh, yeah, he, he could be uh, one one of those guys that we could plug in at left tackle. But he's just more so an unknown right now. 
just off the top of my head, I haven't checked it, just thought about it. Is the big guy uh Proctor who came from Alabama and then went to Iowa? Is he still in the portal? Big um, left tackle, big young left tackle. I think he went to Iowa from Alabama. Let me see. Yeah, I think he went from yeah, back to Alabama, but I don't know if that was official. Let me see. Uh, real quick, this is some news just off the top. Iowa lands Alabama offensive line, Caden Proctor. But where is – I'll check that out. Y'all check that out also if y'all get a chance in the chat. Let me know what Caden Proctor is and would he be a good addition to the Buffaloes to have as that left tackle competing with Jordan Seaton. All right, that's just at the top of my head I thought about. Okay, so yeah. let's move on to some more things uh, we talked about. And here we go. The de defense is definitely flying around right now. The defense is flying around right now. Let me know what you think about the defense and what you've seen so far uh, from your eyes. Well, it's uh, it's been fun to see Shiloh run around, make some big hits and all that. But it's <laughs> it's been really interesting to watch the linebackers, uh, Chico. I think this has been kind of funny to me. It's that, okay, we're still within the first few weeks of spring practice, and everybody's just already losing their mind over the fact that, you know, the two returning veteran linebackers get the first start uh, with, with the ones. Uh, what uh -oh. the hell is is earth-shattering about there? that? You said two uh, veteran linebackers get the first. Okay, I hear you now. Yeah, yeah, with, with Bentley and Trevor Woods, you know, they've been running with the ones, and – I, again, I I feel like that's how it normally is for a, a lot of these position battles. When you come into spring, usually the guys that are returning with the most experience are at least going to give that going to get that first shot to retain those first team reps. I know we got a guy coming in, Jalen Wester, that a lot of people are excited about, including myself. But um, I I think a lot of people are just freaking out about this. Where I I feel like that's the right call. You know, give Trevor Woods. Uh, you know, the ability to have a full spring preparing to play the linebacker position. And I thought Bentley improved as the season uh, went forward. I do hope that we look for more of the linebacker or more linebackers in the portal. But uh, yeah, I was wondering, like, as a former player, big dog, you know, what do you think uh, about that? Like, is that normally pretty typical to just kind of, even if they don't hold on to it, have those returners at least get the first shot? Well, especially looking in the landscape of Colorado football right now, and bringing in DJ Lundy, who was a number, probably number top rated linebacker against the run in college football last year, definitely on Florida State's team, with him coming in and pump faking, then leaving back out. Um, you know, you of course, yeah, you'll have the veterans going into the spring. You'll have the veteran guys, your your returning starters, as the number one guys and the position to lose. You know. It, that's just how it is. Trevor Woods and Devonta Bentley, and then DeMore Kennedy is gone. So everybody you have there, you know, is it, kind of on the depth chart has been trying to move up to get in that number two or number one spot. But it's been v Bentley and Trevor Woods. Uh, you got JB making some plays. Jeremiah Brown makes some plays in the spring. Um, a few other guys who's Gant. been moved in back there. Gant has been positioned in. Mm -hmm. uh, Wester, I like Wester a lot. But a guy like Gant and Wester coming in, Gant coming off an injury, Wester coming in from our FAU, mm -hmm. they're going to have to take those spots from Bentley and Trevor Woods, in my opinion. They're going to have to take them. Um, no, now I'm not talking about Bentley and Woods making mistakes. I'm talking about you're going to have to play so well that coach will pencil you in as the starter. That's how it yep. works. Um, yes, like you said, they're going to continue to try to bring in a couple more veteran linebackers to even comp compete even more. But if if you can do something like, let's say, what can help those linebackers be better? Let's improve the defensive line. Let's keep some guys, let's keep some offensive linemen off of them. And I think that's what we've done right now so far. Improve that defensive line with big uh big Barnes, who we saw Coach Prime praising, mm -hmm. big Aunt Quinn Barnes, uh Chidozi Wonquo, uh Mari McNeil. And, uh, and so on. And defensive line has been looking pretty good flying around. So um, I would just say have those starters go in there. Is their position to lose. Yeah. Backups, you have a great opportunity. 
but know that we're bringing in some more guys uh, after the spring also. Yeah, and uh, is this true, uh, Chico, that uh, Victory Johnson is moving to to edge? Because, man, he, he's been somebody that I still felt like was maybe a year away or so, but, I mean, but having an athlete probably- like there in the middle, man, could have been huge. Yeah. Here, here's my thing, though. Um, two things. Victory is about six foot three, six foot four, bigger linebacker. I think he's he. If we're going to be doing some Tampa two type stuff where we're asking the middle linebacker to drop, I think he would be perfect for that. Mm-hmm. Taller, rangier linebacker, even from his film from high school, can go sideline to sideline. But is he comfortable reading and taking on those big guy, those big guards and and centers in the middle of the field, or is he more? position i know his body type is more of an edge rusher being mm-hmm. taller longer lankier type guy i think his body type is more of an edge rusher so maybe that's why he might be moving but inside we want those uh thicker stronger guys taking on those blocks uh agility shiftier guys more of a run block more of a run um mm-hmm. uh, defense type guy so uh we'll see but i just say that based off his body type i do think he's more of an edge rusher okay Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think who is it? Mantrez Walker. We have making an official visit for the spring game. And I think we have a couple more. I think we might have an unofficial visit tomorrow or either today with another linebacker that's being recruited. So I know awesome. it's an area of emphasis. I'm hoping we can get some more bodies in there, especially with uh, yeah, I guess victory and Morgan Pearson moving out uh, out to different positions. Yeah, Morgan Pearson now at tight end. Um, I think though that's going to be a spot we're going to really try to attack in uh, in the portal after the spring. I think Coach Riz is putting in some work right now with uh, some re- some high school recruits, four and five stars that are in Boulder right now, yeah. uh, enjoying this good weather. So um, just stay on the lookout for that. I think those guys are, will be those guys will be coming in, and Coach has really made an improvement in that staff to where they're going to bring in more guys and and be way more attractive to prospects in that portal who are looking to go to the league, who have league-type grades, who are prospects for the NFL. I think we're going to attract more of those guys because of this staff right here that Coach Prime is bringing in. Um, NFL-type guys, who's been your favorite to see so far on the staff? Of course, you got big Warren Sapp. You got big George Hageman. You got D. Lou uh, on the defensive line who played with the Seahawks. Mm -hmm. You got Adelius Thomas, former edge rusher with the Ravens. Um and and uh, Jason Phillips who played pro ball he's a wide receivers coach now. What do you think about this big field load hold? Of course, yeah, it's field talent and a defensive coordinator coming from the league. What do you think, man? I've call me a homer here, Chico, but I I just absolutely love seeing Warren Sapp on the field, man. Uh, I, I I think you know he's totally thrilled to be here. He's loving it, yeah. and I think it's great to see him. And not just chilling out on the sidelines. I mean, he's getting in there on the field, communicating with the players, letting them know what's up. And again, I think that th- there were some different reasons or things to navigate with how exactly to get him on the staff. But I, who cares? Who cares what his title is? I see people battling about that in the comments. I do. I do not care what his title is. They don't care what it is either. They're paying this man like an assistant coach, 150 grand. Um, I am glad that CU has found a way to make it work. And I think that, yeah, we got uh, Coach Damian Lewis on here. We got a handful of other NFL guys. But uh, the fact that you can also have somebody like Warren Sapp working with the rest of the defensive line, I think is huge. I love his charisma. And I, I, I really see it as a fun and exciting hire. I'm interested to see how this D-line uh, plays man i i know we're forever away from it but i i just want to see him play with some of that warren sap nasty you know oh yeah uh hall of famer warren sap they're saying here has been reported just like you said who made over 58 million during his nfl career of 13 years he will be getting and they say only in the article one hundred and fifty thousand dollars annually in his new entry-level coaching job at the colorado buffaloes uh, football on the head coach Deion Sanders, according to employment documents obtained by USA Today Sports. The pay might even might seem like a come down for him. Twelve thousand uh, 
12500 per month plus 15000 in moving expenses. But he wants to work for Coach Prime is what the article said. A, a fellow Pro Football Hall of Famer. And he is starting at the ground floor as a college coach in part because he has little prior coaching experience, it says. By contrast, as head coach, Sanders is set to make $5.7 million this year. And it says NCAA rules and Warren Sapp's job title. Sapp pay still is believed to be on the high side for a graduate assistant coach. You don't say. <laughs> you don't say. But as it should, though, as he is a Hall of Fame graduate assistant coach who's coming into a, 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 a spot in a position that is greatly needed, you know, with the Colorado Buffaloes to improve that defensive line. Uh, the recent rule change is also why there's been some confusion about his job title. His appointment letter says football quality control senior analyst. And but that's not what his official title has been. Uh, Sap is 51 years old as a graduate assistant coach. That means he is required to be enrolled in graduate level coursework at the school, as the university said he is. He is also not allowed to have off campus contact with recruits, according to NCAA rules for a position. So also, as lastly, the university noted in a statement Monday that Sap passed the background check and has and had a meeting with Colorado Athletic Director Rick George to clearly articulate the department's standards and expectations to which he acknowledged and agreed. Of course, people have been sending me stuff about Sap's past and this, that, and other. Everybody has a past, but this man is on the right track now. He has a track record of being an upstanding citizen for as long as his football career has spanned it. So you got Big Warren Sapp officially there in whatever capacity on this staff with Coach Prime. I think it's going to be nothing but positiveness going on. Uh, like you said, with that defensive line, um, good things, man. Coach Prime bringing the NFL culture to Boulder. It is so insane, man, to just – when you take a step and just look back. And two years ago, man, I just never thought you would see – Somebody like Coach Prime here, as well as now you got other Hall of Famers like Warren Sapp <laughs> like here in Boulder, man. It is, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. And I think he's going to love it out here. Obviously, an, an outdoorsy guy. I'm sure that he has a lot to do between coaching and some of this graduate school work. I'm interested to hear what type of master's program he's going to be. Uh, pursuing but he's gonna love it out here plenty of places to fish different types yeah. of fishing as well so i think that would be yeah. cool to see maybe him and uh travis try out some fly fishing during some of the got, off, uh, you off got, got a lot of fishermen on this team man. a lot of yeah. outdoorsmen on this team and sap said he even open to learning how to fly fish I love it. so um let me see yep i did hear bucky ask coach prime if sap could be or should be coaching during drills and coach prime did say yes so i agree with that all right so shout out to warren sap and all of the coaching uh additions to coach prime staff and the colorado buffaloes that are nfl uh material nfl ready nfl experienced over 130 years i think he said on this staff of nfl experience yeah we better kick some ass this year with all that experience that's what i'm expecting man I think they'll definitely have an attitude to kick some butt, but uh, uh, with Warren Sapp, I think him and just that NFL, like those guys have that different type of competitiveness, dog. So you're going to see the offensive line and defensive line getting at it after each other. I'm talking about when it really, 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 really starts up. You're going to see the coaches yapping at each other if if coach if uh, if Bucky shows us all these things. So a whole different atmosphere, dog. Whole whole different atmosphere. I think I was saying this a while ago. I'm looking forward to seeing that moment during the season or whatever where Warren Sapp takes one of those tablets, man, and just smashes it, man. I want to see that. <laughs> want to see Big Sapp get mad. Yeah, yeah, I want to see him get mad. Sapp not fishing. Sapp in the <laughs> snow. Sapp getting mad. That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, I will ask this, though, because I asked uh, from the last show, but – who do you think – well, I, I based this off of – because I had a picture of the Auburn running backs from years ago, early in the 2000s, mm -hmm. uh, where 
It had Ronnie Brown, Cadillac Williams, Brandon Jacobs, and the walk-on Trey Smith. And those guys were electric at Auburn that year. I think they went undefeated that year when they won the national championship, either that year or the year after. Was it with? It was with Cam Newton. But either way, they had a hell of a running back room. We could talk about Miami too, but I yeah. think the Colorado Buffaloes has a running back room that can compete with you know anybody you put up there. Who do you think would be the starters? Or I say starters. Who do you think would be the starter oh, in that man. running back room? You know, above? this is a good question, Big Dog, because I've gone back and forth thinking about this because I guess in my, like, official predictions and stuff like that, you know, I said, I, you know, Alt McCaskill is going to be that guy. You know, we convinced him to come back and and all that. But uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I – I think a lot of people look at Dylan Edwards as he's just kind of always going to be what he was last year. He was a true freshman last year. You know, he's only going to get better. And I think it's going to be hard to keep a guy like that off the field just with that type of speed. Um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's more of a 1-2, 50-50 split combination with him and, and McCaskill. I don't know if you're going to see – a work a workhorse here in Boulder this year, but uh, again, I think Dylan's. I think he's probably getting faster running track. We've seen him bulk up a, a little bit this off season as well. He's going to be better in pass protection, and uh, yeah, I I do wonder if we might see him utilized maybe more than some people are expecting. Again, uh, I'm I'm pumped to see what McCaskill can do, but it's also it's just been so long since we've seen him do anything of of note, you know, since his freshman year at Houston. So going back to some of the conversations we were having around the linebackers with Trevor Woods and Bentley, I, I kind of wonder, I haven't been paying too much attention to, I feel like they kind of rotate through all the running backs, but I kind of wonder right now if it's Dylan Edwards' job to kind of hold on to. Mm. What are your thoughts? Or, or his job to lose or yeah. however you want to put it out there. I think, though, the best thing, excuse me, the best thing for this room would be to have a three-headed monster. I've been saying this the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I don't know whether it's going to be equally split, split up, but as a coach, you would say we're going to see what Alton can bring coming off that injury, and we'll ride it from yep. there. We know – what Dylan can bring, but now we have an improved offensive line, so he should even be better in a different type system with uh, Pat Sherman, who can use him in his special ways. And then you got a bail Kyle, in my opinion, like a Savion Wilkerson, who can be that in between. I think he might be the best in between. You can't just say that off the top because <laughs> Alton is so patient in between those tackles, but. I just a tough runner would be uh, uh would be Savion to me, the most dynamic runner, of course, explosive would probably be Dylan to me, um, the the most let me see I would say the most what can I call uh, alto versatile the guy uh, who looks like Eric Dickerson out there I mean I you know, like he's got that or Adrian he's, Peterson he's got that kind of style of running I think the guy that would be better in pass protection. Um, you know, overall, just just overall back, I think would be Alton McCaskill. Yeah. Uh, Dylan is just so uh, electric, man. It's just hard to not have him on the field. You know, only time you want to have Dylan off the field is if he's a little bit tired or winded. Winded, get him off, let him get a breather, but get him back on there. But you feel the same way about McCaskill also, and you can't go wrong with Wilkinson. So, man, but I do think they will start off this year. Here's my prediction. Okay. What's Chico going to say? <laughs> I do think that they will start off this year with Dylan in the backfield on first down on the first day, of, first play of the series. And then as the year goes on, we'll see Alton McCaskill continue to get stronger and stronger. I think he's going to put do some things this year that a lot of people are not expecting. And just a lot of people don't even – probably don't even realize he can do and he can provide will be out to McCaskill. Oh man. So, 
I love that idea, especially because our schedule gets harder as the season goes on. Like those last four games, man, they're they're real tough, and we're gonna need a back, yeah. playing you know playing smash mouth football back there. And McCaskill can be that guy. My question to you is, in terms of like running back rotation, what do you feel like is most ideal to kind of alternate series or to give a running back like two three series before you put another back in there? What's ideal to you in your experience? That's a great question right there because uh, some coaches just go off the paper and say, you know, you got this series, you get the next series. No matter if the player is hot or whatever, you go, you know, and then some people just go with the hot hand. Me personally, I go by what's called probably like spelling or I go by, let's say you got Dylan in there and he's being productive. Only time he's coming out is to get get some water, get some spelling, Get some get get a uh, um you know somebody subbing in for him. So let's say Dylan comes out after being productive, and Alton goes in right, and he becomes productive. How do you take him out? How do you bring in Dylan? Look at them, whether they're breathing hard, gasping for air. Long story short, I'm keeping the fresh guy in and the productive guy in, and I'm watching it as the game go on. I'm not pre scheduling or predetermining saying that you're going to go in on 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 the third play or you're going to go in on this series i'm going strictly off of what i see and if i see a guy being productive and he's not putting his hands on his knees he's ready to go he got that that bounce in him he's feeling it because a lot of times it takes you get hit a, you know a couple times to say i'm ready to play now so i would i would go with that rotation man just spell them based off of production and and energy period that makes sense and with like third downs too is that kind of how you see it as well just riding whoever is is the hot hand or do you well, prefer to have a dedicated third round or third down back that that would be uh i would have that set up before now that would be kind of predetermined as far as down and distance goes so okay i'm looking at the down and distance and what i know my offensive coordinator may call here so if it's if it's down in distance and I know that it's a maybe 37, right? And mm-hmm. we're in a passing situation. Unless and I'm gonna work closely with my offensive coordinator because what I'm trying to do is keep Dylan from being in, in a situation where he will have to pass protect, but also I want to have Dylan in a situation where he can go out on a swing pass or get one on one with these guys. And that might require them to have some wrinkles in the offense to where Dylan doesn't just stay in the backfield. He now uh, motions out and now it's an empty backfield with Shadour. And now it gives Shadour more of a clear look. It gives Dylan a, 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 a easier understanding of what he has to do, which is now he's running a route. But it forces the defense to say, are we going to cover this guy? Or are we going to blitz the quarterback? Mm-hmm. Right? And now he's on the quarterback boom, to make that decision, make that read. He's not worrying about whether the running back is on the same page to pick up the blitz, the offensive line is on. No, we're going to simplify this thing. We're going to go empty then. Okay, they didn't make an adjustment, so that means they're all coming or they're in man. A simple read for the quarterback, and we go from there. Uh, Where Alton is in there, Alton has the same type of skill skill sets. Might not be as fast as Dylan, but he can really uh, pass block, and he can catch the ball out of the backfield. So – just as well as uh, Alta can be in there in the past situation, same as Dylan. So uh, it, I would just have to work with my offensive coordinator and go based off down and distance. What do we normally like to do? And who would mm-hmm. you like to have in there, coach? And go like that. Yeah. Makes now, sense. Uh, shout out to the people in the chat. Dennis said, hey, guys, do you think the team looks bigger this year than last? Of course. <laughs> I think so, man. Especially on that offensive line, you can Especially just you can tell, man. All right, shouts out to everybody up in here. People on uh, Big Dog Chico channel, David Talks Buff channel, and David Talks Buffs on Twitter. Follow, like, subscribe. Uh, when the running back lined up on the side of the quarterback, you know which way they're going to going in the shotgun. In my opinion, uh, I harped on this when I saw uh, the Well Off Media and I saw B Gant at linebacker. I always say this at linebacker. If I'm if I see the running back lined up on a certain on whatever side, opposite mm-hmm. side of the quarterback, I know that the 90% of the time the handoff or the RPO would be coming across the quarterback's face. So as the front side linebacker, 
I'm going to play that. I'm going to try to shoot that gap and play that. Yeah, you got to be uh, cognizant of the RPO, but you don't want to be out of position to give up those long runs. So uh, I, I agree with that, Rosecrans. Yeah, you can see that, and it should be something you read um, based off the alignment before the snap even happens. Uh, let me see. We got a lot of people in the chat right now, Dave. We got a few more minutes. We can stay on here, maybe. Yeah. Let's see here. Rodney saying Alton is starting. B said. I just I, hope we see more under center, more pistol, more pistol. That would be really nice. That's what. Yeah, that's a great yeah. question right there. What What are some other formations you would like to see uh, with us? But I guess you just named it. Yeah. Pistol, under center, uh, maybe some two back formations. Hell, maybe even some 22 personnel. Wouldn't that be interesting if we run some of those sets? We'll see what happens with this tight end group, too. Again, uh, I, I like that we brought in Sam Hart, I believe is his name, transfer from Ohio State. Obviously didn't really get on the field much, but spending that much time at Ohio State, I'm sure he knows how to block well, and that's going to be really important for, I, I feel like, this Pat Shermer offense. Yeah, that's yeah. a big body tight end, 265, mm -hmm. 55. Yep, you're right. Mm -hmm. Oh, big dog. I was wanting to tell you, man, I've been thinking about this, and maybe maybe you can think of, you know, four players or staff members eventually if you wanna if you if you wanna come up with your own four. But you know me. Um keeping me nicotine free this year, it's all on the buffs, and that's <laughs> why I'm coming up with my new port four, my four players that are gonna, you know, that <laughs> They're just going to keep everything relaxed, man. They're going to solve all the issues. So, uh, of course, I'm going to have a guy on special teams of trying to figure that oh. out. But my my new port four, you know, these are the guys who are going to bring stability to the team. Are you serious? All right, so we need to get an endorsement for Newport Cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> That's new right. Newport four from Dave. Here we go. Let's get the Newport four. Yeah, so I'm I'm just trying to think about that. You know, I I like that we brought in big leg Gerlock, third leg Gerlock. You know, he's gonna be able to split the gooch right there with the 62 yard field goals outside. Man, that guy's gonna be able to do kickoffs really good. And you know, we got Mata who's automatic from the place kicking, and he, we'll we'll see what else happens, man. But I'm uh, I'm excited we had another kicker. I, I I got excited about that. Did a whole video on it. Yeah, I think he's a, a big strong leg kicker too. Uh, so more competition back there. O overall, I think across the board, man, bring in more guys, bring in better players across the board. Let go of some of the other guys who don't want to be here and bring in better players across the board. Let them compete and see what happens. Yes, there's a big pause from right there with the third leg <laughs> from Dave. <laughs> but he kicking that thing, though, man. So we shall see what happens from there. One last thing, though, before we go. One last thing. Bow. Best NFL team fit for Xavier Weaver. I got Xavier Weaver on here instead of Xavier Weaver with the X. I know that's not he, he, he likes to say his name, but uh, what are some uh, – what are the best team fits for Xavier Weaver? I know they're saying that he had been contacted by uh, the Chiefs, the mm -hmm. Raiders, who else? Uh, maybe the Saints and the Panthers and a few other teams He's he was contacted by. But, of, of course, the Chiefs stand out. You know, if we could see him in a Chiefs uniform, what do you think about that? Man, I mean, that would be great. It would be great for Zay, man. It would it would break my heart being a lifelong Broncos fan, man. I bleed orange and blue. We got a terrible receiving core right now. We need somebody like that to stay here in Denver. Please, please. I would absolutely love that. I know the Cardinals are also in need of a ton of wide receivers uh, because, I mean, they really just had Hollywood Brown, and uh, he's off to the Chiefs now. So, I, I think that there are plenty of – Buffalo is another team that's going to be looking for some bargain-wide receivers with them yeah. uh, trading Stephon Giggs, Diggs and taking on a $31 million dead money cap hit to get him off the team. Uh, crazy. So there's a lot of opportunity for a receiver like Zay. I think, man, with this 40 time, he cemented himself as, you know, being a day three pick somewhere. And, uh, I mean, I'm a homer, man. I hope it's to my Denver Broncos. Let's go grab a slot guy like Luke McCaffrey from Rice. Mm, I would time. love that. You know, keeping the McCaffreys here in Colorado, and then uh, we we can get Zay, who can play a little bit more outside and 
hopefully catch some passes from a quarterback that has somewhat of a live arm. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. But what hey, about you, man? Where do you want to see him? Denver would be a nice fit. Uh, Jerry Judy's gone. You know, I don't know whether that's a good thing for some of you guys, but I like Jerry Judy. Um, but we'll see. I, but I think he'd come in and, and fit like in the Jerry Judy role for the Broncos. Um, you know, a lot of different teams out there. As long as, as, long as the, offensive court, the offensive scheme fits mm-hmm. him and what he can do in his skill set, I think he'll be fine. Uh, San Diego Chargers got rid yeah. of uh, uh, Big Mike out there. And Keenan Allen. I mean, Keenan, big Keenan Allen and, and Mike. Dang, I said Mike. Yeah, he's with the oh. Jets. Mike Williams signed with the Jets. Yeah, so he can go out there on the West Coast and get it in, and it's, it'll it'll be nice and warm. I know he's from the uh, from Florida, so he might like that. A lot of people say he's going third round. Some people say he's going fifth. Um, I hope my Falcons stay away from Zay. He doesn't need that problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> anywhere between that third round and and fourth or fifth round for Zay Weaver. Will be excellent for him, and uh, hopefully he gets in the right situation. Um, so, shouts out to Zay Weaver, man. Way to go out there and run that 40 time like you did it under pressure too, you know. Knowing that he had to perform, he was the only one out there. Everybody came out there to support him. So, happy for Xavier Weaver uh, that I have spelled up here with a Z and not an X. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're combining his nickname. Yeah. His- there that's, you go. That's just what it is. Hey, uh, something that I didn't have on the board, but I thought about when they said uh, Zay Weaver, and I uh, saw a couple pictures this week with my guy, Double S Two Shador Sanders, uh, kind of like one of those AI mock-up pictures, but had him in a Cowboys uniform. Oh yeah, I saw that too. The cowboy hat. Now, not looking too much forward. Let's do it. Let's, let's just say. Them Cowboys have another Cowboy type season. Dak Prescott is what done with his contract after this yeah. year. Mike McCarthy, the, the 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 coach, Mike McCarthy, McCartney, McCarthy, whatever his name is, he's the coach, and uh, he's on his final year of the contract. Yes, history says that the Cowboys will be okay, maybe make the playoffs, but get bounced out in the first first round. This Typical. year. And then you have Shadur Sanders coming up in the draft. Travis Hunter. And a lot of people are speculating Coach Prime might be on the move also. I don't think that, even though there's word out there saying that Miss, uh, his daughter Shalomai is in the transfer portal. I haven't confirmed that, but uh, I think it is, has been confirmed. But I haven't confirmed on my sources yet. But all of these things swirling around, man. What do you think? Do you think the Cowboys – would try to make a push. They have a Cowboy season this year. You think they'll try to have <laughs> – shout out to Cowboy fans out there. But do you think the Cowboys will and Jerry Jones will go after and pursue Shadur Sanders as hard as, as, as Jerry Jones is known to do? Absolutely, and I want to see it happen so bad. I think it would be the ultimate Jerry Jones Cowboys move to go yeah. – to go and get him. Um, I I don't know if I can take it, you know, that next step further where some people say, oh, man, and he'll uh, fire or let Mike McCarthy walk and hire Coach Prime. Again, I, I think that's a little tougher to sell in an NFL locker room. We've seen college coaches coach their sons all the time in college like that is. But with the NFL, it's, it's a little bit different, and nor do I see Coach Prime – and Jerry Jones just meshing in that way. Jerry Jones likes his yes, man. That's kind of how I see it. I don't see how it would happen. And I think, again, as exciting as it would be to have Prime there, I I just... Uh, Right now, okay, again, what would need to happen for Jerry Jones to justify that on an NFL level? I think it's like, I mean, we got to be in like a national championship game this year. That's kind of how I see it. You know, Um, you got to big time exceed expectations uh, to, uh, I I feel like to sell that to the Cowboys fan base, but I do think it's a lot easier to sell just on the quarterback. I think Shador would be great. The story of him going back to Dallas, of course he fits the whole Cowboys 
culture, I feel perfectly. And yeah. I would imagine if they move off Mike McCarthy, uh, that they, they're going to bring in another offensive coach that I think would, uh, you know, work with him. We've seen like with the Indianapolis Colts when they drafted um, Andrew Luck. Good they luck. brought in Pep Hamilton from Stanford to work with him. So, hey, you want to talk about the conspiracy theories and all that? How about this? How about if the Buffs have a great year this year, Shador balls out, you know, drafted uh, high first overall or whatever to the Cowboys. Maybe they just bring Pat Shermer over there as OC. <laughs> hey, I, I wouldn't put it past them. I wouldn't put it past them. Now, you you know, especially with their relationship that they're forging, if they have a great relationship and it works out and Coach Prime is not available, bring over Pat Shermer, former head coach. Now he has a quarterback he's worked with since college. You know, we might be reaching here because we don't know yeah. what pick the Cowboys will be having, but we'll we'll see. But I, I, I do think in my heart of hearts that if, let's say, there is a scenario where Coach Prime ever goes to the NFL, I don't think it'll be in Shadur's first or second year as a pro. Yeah. I think he'll let him go. And I also think he's he's very much invested in being successful in Colorado with all of the people he's brought in and have around him and life changings uh that that has gone on with them moving to Colorado for Coach Prime, wanting to help Coach Prime be successful. Um, I don't know how easy that would be to just pack up, say, all oh, y'all, come on, we're going to go to Dallas now, you know, and we're going <laughs> right. to do it in Dallas. But I think what he has built in Colorado, the culture, that's why it still surprised me that Shalomai may be transferring, but it could yeah. be a, for a whole different reason. But at the end of the day, I think that Co Coach Prime is in Colorado. He's settled. I don't see any other place – other than Dallas, that he would consider going, and that's only that's that's the reason why because it's Dallas history there lives there, recruiting would be crazy there, um, but I'm saying recruiting as in college football or, or NFL. I, I still think NFL players would flock to play with Coach Prime. You don't think so? NFL players, I think so, but again, I think like. We got to – I think that they would want to see, you know, I think some of the things that, like, we saw last year, you know, cleaned up, which I think he will. I think he will get there. But um, I'm. it's hard for me to say, like, after us coming off of, like, a 4-8 and eight season, it, you know, any coach saying, I think that they well, – it's it, about it would work with them being a Dallas Cowboys head coach right now, you know? It's about business. Yeah. In Jerry world, they haven't won in the 25, 30 years anyway. <laughs> so at least, at least the business need to be up, and we, at least we have a shot with a quarterback who is probably talented, more talented, or as talented than any quarterback they've had in recent years. Um, shouts out to Tony Romo, who was very good, but just couldn't get over that hump for whatever reason. I think Shadour can come in there and be that beacon of light for him. I don't know how long Jerry Jones has left to see it. Will he Doesn't. see it? But if he can leave it in the hands of anybody. I think he loves Coach Prime. I think he loves Dion from what he did with him when he first brought him over in 1995 all the way up to now. I think he'll love him just like that to where he'll hand the keys to his son, but he'll say, you make sure Coach Prime is driving. Man. <laughs> well, if the batting odds ever come out for that, I'm going to be thrilled to see what they are because I might just put some money down just for the fun of it, man. You, uh, you you, but you, I still maintain this, big dog, is that, man, if Al Davis was still alive, I could totally see him. Going out for man. Okay. Yeah. I like but that. But he's you, dead. Just, you let me know if you if you bet, because uh, you've been seeming see, seemingly to uh, hit every time that you put on a bet. <laughs> man, I, 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 I did lose some money, man. What was it against Oregon and USC and all that? But ultimately, man, I ended up on top. But I haven't placed... Exactly. I haven't placed the bet on the national championship yet for CU. Uh, okay. I need to do that. I just Man, it just hasn't be been some, on my mind yet. That will be some money. All right, last thing we're going to address here is the elephant been in this chat. And we kind of talked about a pre-show, but 
The elephant in the chat right here. Kamani, no, not that. <laughs> <laughs> we got the inside reporting here from Big Dog. Hold up. Did he just say this? Rosecrans said, Kamani in the trap house playing video. Man, that's not what I meant to click on. What I meant to click on <laughs> was the question about Kamani McClain. They asked, where's Kamani McClain? Where's Kamani? He skipped out. He did this. Listen, I've gotten word that Kamani McClain, and I, yeah, I, I think I can say this, that the man is, okay, I can say this, right? That apparently he is just coming back nursing an injury, and he's just not been on the field. That's all, just like anybody else who would. I think Carter Stottmeyer also, and a few other guys, they're just nursing those injuries, haven't been on the field, and that's why you haven't seen them on camera. And I think it's been intentional, you know, but that's just from one source right there saying that the guy, uh, Kamani, young stud is uh, is hurt right now and just getting back and nursing that injury. That's all. Big dog, I ain't going to get you demonetized, man. I'm going to censor myself. But, <laughs> but th there are a bunch of weirdos on the Internet. If th You know, doing this channel for the last 14 months or whatever has taught me one thing is that, man, just – humanity man i got a little hope for us man as a human race I, <laughs> I i just do man they're they're just not a lot of uh you know bright individuals out in the world that's what the internet showed me and uh like weird stalkers a, a lot of weird stalkers leave the man alone like hey unfortunately if something, if something happens just wait for an announcement until yeah. then just fucking sorry about this just worry about what you see on the screen man people are the, so it's weird it's the truth though you, you're speaking the truth like people will hit me up after uh well off media just dropped right they'll hit me up i, I haven't seen come on in three days why haven't you seen him dog you're not at practice if you were at practice, then you could look around to the places that you want to look to and go ask the people that you want to ask. But if you just basing it off, I didn't see him in a video. Don't you? You didn't see a lot of other people in the video either. Yeah. Like, leave, leave it, leave it alone. At some point, man, uh, the guy's there. He said on camera for you guys, "I'm not transferring." I didn't yeah. say this. Somebody else didn't say this. He said it out of his mouth. I'm not transferring. So stop asking. All of these questions. It's like, this is the thing, man. I love that we got well off and reached the people and all the practice footage every day, man. But sometimes it just, Buff Nation, we got to police each other a little bit with this thing because it's like we take something good and then we turn it all toxic and then, and then we ruin what was good. Then we ruin what was good. And it's like almost, almost big dog. I just want them to just not freaking air anything because it's, it's driving me crazy that, like you said, we got to respond to, the, and then we we get all the fake insiders DMing us all the time, saying, "Well, my sources tell you this," and I'm saying, "Well, your sources are full of shit. They don't know anything. Why don't you just wait until you see something happen?" But there's always drama around these kids that is not Rose, their fault. Rose Grant says it's not about transfer. They just want to know if he hurt. Uh, bored. They they didn't. They're not asking that though. They're saying, "Where is Kamani? Where is Kamani? Where is he? I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him." Now, if they ask, is he hurt? Then I'll say, yeah, he, he he's apparently hurt. But people asking it in the way that they ask it, and, and Bridgie broke it down right here perfectly. People clamor for the negative. That's what it is. And that's what I feel like the questions come in as negative type questions, hoping that it's going to be something like that. But uh, yeah, right. it's all love at the end of the day. But – don't jump to so many conclusions each and every day. I'm like, this is every day. This is not from you, Corey. Bory, or, or, or I'll call you Corey. Hell yeah, I'm in my feelings. People get off to this stuff every day. Yes. That's what it is, yes, Corey. I'm in my feelings. Absolutely. <laughs> but it's not from the questions that's just in the chat. It's from the questions that come every day as soon as the video drops to the DM. <laughs> to the DMs. You're like, bro, I, I'm I'm getting a DM and I'm thinking that it's it's uh something going on, but it's where is Kamani at? I'm like, oh, he just wasn't shown in the video. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's what I'm saying. We are addressing all of it across the board as one right now. So for all the questions about Kamani, 
all the question about the so ons in the DMs, especially. That's what we're referring to. That's what I'm referring to. Y'all can ask all the questions you want to in the chat. That's what the chat's for. Yeah. I agree. That's what it's for. But, dang. But I, I'm telling you, David Talks Buff shot collars, they're coming out. So you can you can put one on yourself whenever you have a thought about Cormani. It just automatically shocks you. So stop it. <laughs> shot collar. Shot collars. All right. What does Shannon and Ocho think? Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Shay, Uncle Shay, they asking about you. Hey, that's right, that's right. When are we gonna see Chico on uh, on Uncle Shay Shay, man? Hey, <laughs> wouldn't that be the bomb? <laughs> Somebody said, "Where's Alton?" Yeah, they asking all type of questions. Okay, where's Alton? Alton is that practice? How about that? Where's Diddy? We gonna talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Diddy Bob? Did he, did he show up to any CU games this year? Yeah, take that, take that. Damn. <laughs> I, man, you got me speechless right now, dog. I don't know what to say. Where's Diddy? <laughs> hey, I know where I'm gonna be. I'm I'm doing like uh like Cat Williams said, and like such and such said, uh, you gotta leave the party early. You gotta yeah, leave that's right. Early. You, but, you see that clip of him uh, hugging Justin Bieber the other day, and, like patting him down. People, people are like, he's probably trying to see if if uh, Bieber was wearing a wire. <laughs> hey man, listen man. Shouts out to Inglewood. Um, and oh, yeah, go ahead and put your cities in your states in in the chat so we can give a shout out. But as far as Diddy goes, man, he hasn't been charged with anything. Uh, it looks like they're going to be filing charges soon. If I was Diddy, y'all let me know in the chat. The diddler, the diddler. Y'all let me know in the chat right now. I got a question. If you were Diddy, do you sell all your stuff and go take your kids and everybody who you know and go out there where Russell Simmons is and go to go to Bali somewhere? When do you do that? Do you do it? Not look at Dave like, hell yeah. What do you do, Dave? <laughs> Absolutely, man. I'm even getting the plastic surgery done and maybe possibly blasting off to Mars, man. I got to get out of here. I'm getting the hell out of here too, though. I feel you, though. I'm yeah, getting dude. the hell America's out. America's an act right, man. Just get out of there. Leave. You, you don't need to come back here, man. You don't need to. You got enough money. You'd have seen all of America, probably. Nobody needs to see you dancing around anymore. Go to a beach in a resort in, in a resort in paradise somewhere and chill for the rest of your life. Right? Yeah. Let me know what it's I would do, dog, because that's what I would do. I would get the hell on so fast, y'all wouldn't know what happened. <laughs> They'll say, "Big dog, been gone. We ain't even charged him yet." Well, you ain't got to charge me, dog. I'm out of oh, here man. before you when, when that time. private jet took off immediately, man. You know, you know he knew. So, yeah, yeah just stay away, man. It just needs to stay away. Stay away from the daily parties that don't drink the champagne. No sex in the champagne room. Yeah, don't. Don't be doing anything that. Remember when, when R. Kelly was doing that tour in Africa, like post COVID, was singing that song. <laughs> Do you got your shots? Are you gonna come back with me to America? Damn, you saw that, Dave. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Dave said, "I loved it." One billion net worth don't mean one billion in liquid assets. It, no, it doesn't. But that's why I nope. said sell everything that you have. Sell the sell the the. Um, yeah, Revolt TV. They said he didn't even have shares in Ciroc. What happened was they would pay him sixty million to be an ambassador for him, sixty million a year to be an ambassador for them, and that's what he was doing. He didn't have any shares in it, so hmm. uh, that's that's interesting to find out. Uh, but he got a lot of money tied up. Well, you uh, better try and liquidate as much as much of it as he can because that stuff is getting frozen. Definitely would be liquidating like my name, John, out this thing. You feel me? Shout out to John the Liquidator. You know what I'm saying? Because I'd be liquidating. You feel me? Selling everything. <laughs> Rosecrans said, Diddy Innocent. He already sold Revolt to a black investor. That's That's been the, the, the rumors. I'm not sure how true it is. Um, got houses he can sell. You know, publishing, clothing, whatever. Uh, 50 Cent really been trolling him, though. I feel sorry for him. Oh, for it. real? I, I yeah. didn't see what 50 Cent was saying. Uh, 50 been going in on it. We might have to do a whole other show on that right there, dog. 50, 
50 been posting each and every day. But you know this? 50's baby mom, and we talking about pop culture, <laughs> right? 50's baby mom, and I think this is what started everything. 50's baby, his son's mother, has apparently, allegedly, been working as Diddy's yeah, sex worker, dog. Can you believe that? <laughs> yeah, I saw that, man. Yeah, that post was unhinged. That's crazy. That's crazy. So they're saying Diddy pays twenty thousand a month, allegedly, for the 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 baby mom to be, you know, basically do what he wants her to do, and he pays several women twenty thousand a month at least for these services, which is just terrible. But I think that's the real reason why 50 uh, got mad at Diddy because he found that out. He's like, <laughs> yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You messing with this? You messing with him? Oh, hell no. You can't be messing with him. You can't be messing with him, Diddy? Oh, I'm about to destroy him. You know, so now he's been going in after him the whole time. So y'all wilding in the chat, Rose. I just said. love to see all the old clips. Like, did you see that clip of, man, I, I forget it. It might have been Jimmy Fallon or some sort of late night where uh, Diddy and Mike Tyson were sitting on the couch together and Mike Tyson had to move over because Diddy kept touching his leg, man, like a weirdo. Oh, I, I, I saw, I, I didn't watch the clip, but I saw the headlines and I was like, what? Did he touch Mike Tyson's leg? Boy, you got to have nerves. Man, man <laughs> I know, I know. And uh, what was that, that, that white boy from Syracuse? What was he doing for Diddy, allegedly? Oh, they say he was the the drug mule, right? Nice. Okay. Need to be big dog after hours for real. But I think he was like a drug mule. He he would be the guy that would have, you know, whatever for Diddy, so that he wouldn't have to carry it for him. Um, I will Always say have that, a fall guy. Always have fall guy. Diddy messed up on this one. I will say this. This is the one story that I believe right here, and I believe it because of where it came from. And it comes it comes from a rapper from the West Coast named Cocaine, who was on a lot of Snoop Dogg's. <laughs> yeah, named Cocaine, Mr. Cocaine. He was on a lot of Snoop Dogg music. If y'all know about Cocaine, put a Cocaine in the chats with a K, all right? But he was on one of these podcast shows, and he told a Diddy story. He said that Diddy contacted him to come do some music um, you know, because he had seen him and heard him on Snoop Dogg album and Dr. Dre's album. So Diddy called him to, and flew him out to Miami, had him working in the studio the whole time. Diddy wasn't even there. Diddy finally shows up, hears some of the music, and then basically invites him out to a party. Of course, he said, yes, I'm going with Diddy. Just him and Diddy, he said, riding in the car. Diddy goes into the ashtray, pulls out one of many pills, which apparently, allegedly, was like an ecstasy pill. Nice. Takes it, offered it. He said, "Nice." <laughs> <laughs> he takes it, offers it to Cocaine. Cocaine says, "No." Of course, he then they go to this club where it's three levels. Uh, they, they go into the first level; it's fine. The second level gets a little weirder. The third level gets even more weirder. Cocaine says he's obviously not feeling comfortable. Oh yeah, and, and, and Diddy, you know, eventually takes him home, but. He said he felt like Diddy was putting him in the environment to see how he would react and then kind of move on that. Yeah, yeah. He was trying to get him, take that XC to get him, uh, you, you know, to, to open his mind to new possibilities of different ways to receive love, man. Good for <laughs> cocaine saying no. <laughs> A man named Cocaine saying no to the XC, right? That, that's right. Cocaine <laughs> only. All right, man. So that's our little. Uh, dark side Dave, big dog after dark segment right there where we talk about Diddy. Maybe we need to have this on on every show where we have a little um, little pop culture, whatever trending topic going on. We talk about it in our way that we do it. You feel me, <laughs> man? I, I love it. I love it, big dog. This segment, they said this segment is sponsored by Versus and what is that? Anaconda Mount Liquor, Mount Liquor, <laughs> and Newport cigarettes. Do you have your passport? Have you got your shots? Why don't you join me and come back to America? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Shouts out to R. Kelly. Shouts out to Dark Side Dave. 
Big Dog Chico. Y'all know what it is, man. Hit the like, subscribe, comment, all the other good stuff. Let me know what y'all thinking. And we're going to be up and up out of here. That's been another episode. I think we might be in it early for some people out there, but I appreciate y'all still in the chat. That's been another episode of Dog and Dave. Dog and Dave. All right? We're Thanks them for like, tuning in, y'all. Thank y'all for coming out. God bless you. And good night. Dog and Dave. Dog and Dave. Ooh. <laughs>